I, I, I always remember, at least uh, when we were in uh, uh, Quail Street, mm -hmm. the, um, what do we call those groups? The, uh, we had a name for all of the different, uh, different groups, like we were worked on the, uh, the building maintenance group, and uh, Ed was the head of the finance group, I think, at the time, weren't you? Yes, he was. He was a wow. finance guy, yeah. And we used to sit around on the old um, the uh, five-gallon plastic buckets and have our <laughs> meetings, which were board meetings, but anybody could go, go to a board meeting, anybody could vote. Well, no, I don't know if anybody no, could no, vote, no, but no, anybody no. could go to a board meeting. Oh, yeah, they were and always open. Okay. And, and lots of people came to the board meeting and talked, mm -hmm. and then the, then the board would vote. Uh, there was a, a vegetable burger that someone had made, and they were selling them, but they weren't inspected. Mm -hmm. Out of somebody's kitchen. And the health department guy was very interested in this. And he said, you can't sell them here. At the end of the day, when the health department guy's official work day was over, he came back and bought some because he wanted to taste them. <laughs> I mean, I remember when Michael, our night manager, Michael Ferrandino's daughter, who was 11 years old, worked as a cashier on, on Quail Street, you know, and it was one day Ed Miller came in and he said, you can't do that. <laughs> and we thought, well, why not? She's a great cashier. She never asked anybody their sign. Or <laughs> she was all business. And, and, and we realized that, oh, there are child labor laws. And, oh, there are laws that relate to what we're doing here. As the first bookkeeper, I had no idea. I was just collecting the money and, you know, people would give me money and I'd put it in the bank account and then we'd write a check to Air One. It was really pretty yeah. simple, but we filed a DBA so we were on the state's radar. So a few months go by and I get an envelope from the state of New York saying, you have not filed for sales tax. You know, you, have, we haven't, you haven't sent in your sales, we weren't collecting anything because we weren't selling anything that that we collected sales tax on, but I still needed to file this form. Who knew? And they were going to fine us $10,000. Oh it was some en enormous amount of money. It definitely involved me calling somebody up and crying, just say, at the state of New York, saying, I didn't know. I didn't know. We're just a little buying club. So we didn't, no. we didn't have a, you know, we were just making it up. And our learning curve was, it, it, it grew with every year that we existed, really, because we would have to deal with all of these new things that we, I mean, we were really a group of people who had no interest in anything that was remotely capitalistic, you know, so running a business and having a business model and having a, a plan for the future, having a strategic planning group it was not it was not something we talked about and and so the evolution of the store really was again organic you know i mean these were things that we we had to learn how to embrace